Hello, my name is Daniel, and today we will be going through the AMC 12 from the year 2001. So let's get started. First problem, the sum of, the sum of two numbers is S. Suppose 3 is added to each number, and then each of the resulting numbers is doubled. What is the sum of the final two numbers? Okay, so we have, let's say it's A and B. So A plus B equals S, right? Um, and then 3 is added to each number. And 2 is multiplied, it's doubled. And then we, and yes, and then we want the sum of these final two numbers. This equals 2 times A plus B plus 12. So this is 2S plus 12. So the answer is E. Number two, let P n and S n denote the product and the sum and the sum respectively of the digits of the integer n. For example, P23 equals 6 and S23 equals 5. Suppose n is a two-digit number such that n equals P n plus S n, what is the unit digit of n? Okay, so P23, P that would be 2 times 3, so that's why it's 6. And then S23, that's 2 plus 3, that's why it's 5. And so let's say that n, <coughs> yeah, yeah, so let's say that n equals um, a, b. So this is 10a plus b, right? Uh, uh, not a times b, but 10a plus b. Um, and so if the, y y so what is the, the unit digit of n? We want b, right? And so first, since this is true, that means 10a plus b equals a, b plus a plus b. And so these b's cancel. So 10a equals b plus 1 times a. So b plus 1 equals 10, b equals 9. So the answer is 9, it's E. Number 3, the state income tax where Kristen lives is levied at, at the rate of p% percent of the first $20,000 of annual income plus p plus 2% of any amount above $20,000. Kristen noticed that the state income, income tax she paid amounted to p plus 0.25% of her annual income. What was her annual income? Okay, so um, 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 let's say say that, that um, her income that is above $28,000 above $28,000, $28,000, let's say this is um, 100x dollars, right? Um, so, so this is 100 times x dollars, and so that means since the whole thing is p plus 0.25%, so p plus 0.25, this is the, the, the percent, so so we um, divide a hundred from the dollar amount, so that's 280 plus x, and this equals um, p percent of the first 28,000, so p times 280 so 280p plus and then p plus 2% of above to uh, ab above above to above 28000 so that is p plus 2 times x right so um, p times 280 plus x plus 0 0.25 0 0.25 280 plus x equals we have 280p and we have xp like that so that's p times 280 plus x plus 2x right so these two cancel and so um, 0 0.25 times 280 0 0.25 times 280 plus x equals 2x <coughs> and so 280 plus x equals um, 2 times 4 that's 8x so um, 280 equals 7x 7x x equals 40 so that means 100x that means 100x as 100x is four thousand dollars four thousand dollars and so um her, her annual income would be twenty thousand plus four thousand and so that would be um thirty two thousand dollars so the answer is b Number four, the mean of three numbers is 10 more than the least of the numbers and 15 less than the greatest. The, the median of the three numbers is five. What is their sum? Okay, so let's first say that the median, sorry, the mean is M, right? Um, and so the, uh, yeah, so, so the least number, the mean is 10 more than the least number. So we have M minus 10. And the greatest number is 15 plus M because M is 15 less than the greatest. So we have M plus 15. And the median is five, so this is in the middle. And what is their sum? So the sum is 2m plus 10, right? And this is the sum of the three integers. But since m is the mean, then that means this is equal to three times the mean, right? Because there's three numbers in total. So that so that equals 3m. That means m equals 10. So 3m, that's what we want because we want their sum. So 3m equals 30. So the answer is d. Number five, what is the product of all positive odd, inter odd integers less than 10,000, right? Okay, so um, um, that would be one times three times five times seven times nine times 11, etc., right? And so that is, uh, um, and so looking at, at our answer choices, we have uh, factorials at the, at the numerator. So that would just be like one times two times three times four times five times six times seven times um, eight times all the way to times one. 
yeah so all the way to times 1000 no sorry times 10,000 and and, um, and that's all over 2 times 4 times 5 sorry 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 times 10 all the way to 10,000 right um, and then now let's look at this bottom part this would be <coughs> this would be 2 times 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 that's 6 um, 2 times 4 that's 8 2 times 5 2 times 5 and then all the way to 2 times 2, 000, two times 5,000 right 2 times 5,000 that would be sorry 2, 2 times 5,000 that would be 10,000 and so um, it, uh, yes so if we take out all the um, twos that are at the front then this would become 2 to the 5,000 power um, times and then that would be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 all the way to 5,000 so that's times 5,000 factorial and so um, this whole thing is going to be this is one this is 10,000 factorial and then over 2 to the 5,000 power times 5,000 factorial this number is just this number taken from there right so this is D it's D number six a telephone number has the form a b c d e f g h i j where each letter represents a different digit the digits in each part of the number are in, are in decreasing order that is um a is greater than b is greater than c d is greater than e is, is greater than f and g is greater than h is greater than i is greater than j furthermore d e and f are consecutive even digits g h i j are consecutive odd digits and a plus b plus c equals nine find a okay so um we have all the possible digits which is zero one two three four five six seven eight nine right and so here um we have five odd and five even right five odd, odd, odd and five even um, uh, um and this is equal to a plus b plus c equals nine so we have a sum of nine plus um and then g h i j are consecutive odd digits so we have four odd plus D, E, and F are consecutive even digits, so we have three even, right? Uh, um, um, and so, in this, that means that in this nine, there must be one odd and two even, right? Okay, so so, so now um, we can get how much this odd, odd value is, because um, if we look at the odd numbers um, that are possible, we have one, three, five, seven, nine, but then since G, H, I, J have to be consecutive odd digits, that means um, it has to be either 1, 3, 5, 7, or 3, 5, 7, 9, that are G, H, I, and J, right? And so that means that the um, candidates for this odd is either 1 or 9, right? So it's either this one or this one because they're at the ends. But then um, since A plus B plus C has to be 9 and um, B and C both cannot be 0, um, that means 9 is impossible. That means the odd value would be 1, right? So... So, um, so this odd value yeah so this odd value is one and that means um, yeah and, and so so um, um, that means that these four are the consecutive odd digits of G H I and J so this is G H I and J right uh, um, um, and the next is um, the um, the um, the uh, the two two even numbers they have to sum to eight right and since D, D, E, E, and F, they, they are also con consecutive even digits, digits that, that means that the only values possible for, for the things that, that sum to 8, this can only be 0 and 8, right? Because if we have 0 and we have 8, then that's the only way that these can be consecutive odd numbers. Sorry, sorry, consecutive even numbers, right? And so now we have our A, B, and C values. They are 0, 1, and 8, right? And then we want A, but then here it said that A is the greatest out of A, B, and C. So this is A. The answer is 8. It's E. Number 7. A charity sells 140 benefit tickets for a total of $2,001. Some tickets sell for full price, a whole dollar amount, and the rest sells for half price. How much money is raised by the full price tickets? Okay, so let's say that um, A tickets sold for full price, A tickets sold for full price, and B tickets sold for half price. Right, um, and so that we will get first of all a plus b equals one forty, right? Uh, um, um, and the next we will get a plus half b times the price, times the price. Um, this is going to be equal to the two thousand one dollars that were raised, two thousand one, right? Um, and then if we um, factor factor two thousand one, um, this is three times twenty three times twenty nine, right? Uh, um, so, so the price has to be either three dollars or twenty three dollars or twenty three or sorry or 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 or, or, or twenty nine dollars or like any combination of these 
uh, but then since a a a plus b equals 140 then the price this this would be 23 that that um, that would be a, a good amount and 29 times 3 that is 87 right so this is 87 um and since a plus b equals yeah and since a, a plus b equals 140 and from this we get a plus half b equals 87 um that means that if we subtract sorry that means that if we subtract these two that we would get one half b one half b this equals 140 minus 87 um which is 53 right so that means b would equal 106 and so a equals um 140 minus 16 minus 106 equals 34 right so 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 a equals 34 and the price price was as we saw it's 23 um, um and so how much money was raised by, by the full by the full price tickets we have to multiply these together so 34 times 23 this is equal to 782 right so the answer is eight Number eight, which of the cones listed below can be formed for, from a 252 degree sector of a circle of radius 10 by aligning the two straight sides? Um, and we have these kinds of answer choices, right? Um, so um, first of all, if we draw this cone, then it will look something like this, right? Um, and this length is going to be translated to that length. So that's gonna be the slant height, which is 10. And so that means our cone is going to have a slant height of 10. So this has slant, has slant height of 10, and this is not height of 10, so this is wrong. This is also okay. Not height of 10, so D is also wrong. D and E has a slant height of 10. Okay, so that's also all correct. Um, and now, um, since we have a circle like that, um, so this circumference that is equal to this much, right? So, um, so, so, so um, to get that length, then, then what we can do is... 2 pi r, um, r being this value, um, this multiplied by 252 out of 360, right? Because this is 252 degrees out of the whole, out of the full 360 degrees, right? And so since r is 10, so 20 pi, 20 pi times 252 out of 360, this is pi times 252 over 18, so this is 14 pi, right? Uh, um, so, so, so this much, yeah, so... This much is fourteen pi. That means that they that these that these circumference, this is fourteen pi, right? And so if we have, um, the 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 um radius of the cone, seen as r, that means, um, let's say it's a, then it's two pi a equals fourteen pi. So a equals seven. The radius is seven. The radius is seven. It's this or this, but then d is wrong. So this is also wrong. So the answer is c. Number nine. Let f be a function satisfying fxy equals fx over y for all positive real numbers x and y if f500 equals 3 what is the value of f600 okay so um, um if since f500 is 3 and we want f600 that means their common factor that is 100 right so f500 f500 this is f100 so yeah so that is f100 um over 5 and so um since f500 is 3 since this is 3, so F100, F100 equals 15. And so F600, F600 equals F100 over 6. This is 15 over 6. This is 5 over 2. So this is the answer. It's C. Problem number 10. The plane is tiled by, con by congruent squares and congruent pentagons as indicated. The percent of the plane that is in in that is enclosed by the pentagons is closest to. Okay, so we, we want the, the um, area that is enclosed by these pentagons, right? Um, but then if you see here, if you divide this into these like um, nine squares, we see that each of these squares is actually just the, the same thing, right? And so so, so um, since we want the percent of the plane that's enclosed, then we can just um, focus on one square and um look at that right and so if we just focus on this square right here right then um, um then the percent of the part yeah yeah so the part that is a, that is enclosed by the pentagons that's this much right so that's exactly this much um um, um and if you see these yeah these can also be in, made into um um a grid and so the colored part is five over the, the total of nine right so this is five over nine of the whole thing and this is 
equal to our percentage and that's what we want right so 5 over 9 this equals um, if we divide it this is um, 0 0.5555 like that so this is 56 percent the answer is D number 11 a box contains exactly five chips three red and two white chips are randomly yeah, 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 and chips are randomly removed one at a time without replacement until all the red chips are drawn or all the white chips are drawn. What is the probability that the last chip drawn is white? Okay, so we have um, red, 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 and white, white, um, and um, the last chip drawn will be white if and only if uh, um, um, we get two whites before getting three reds, right? And so um, let's draw like a tree, tree diagram of this. We have red and white, and this can be going red and white. This can go red and white, and that one in there. And this would go red and white, and that one in there. This would go red and white, and this would in both of these. Um, and for this one, we can go red and white, and that one in there. And this can go red and white, and this would end both ways. And for this one, we can go red and white, and this. And for this one, we can go red and white. This would end both ways. Um, and this would end right here, right? Um, and so in total, we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, um, ten, 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 ten ways to end. Um, and out of those, how many end with a white? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So we have 6 over 10. This is 3 over 5. The answer is D. Number 12, how many positive integers not exceeding 2,001 are multiples of 3 or 4 but not 5? Okay, so uh, um, basically what this wants is if we have like a Venn diagram like this, if this is 3 and 4 and 5, then we want the region that are inside right here. But then... 2001 is just a multiple of 3, but not of 4 or 5. So um, we can get the answer for this problem if we just do it until 2000 um, and then add 1 at the end, right? Um, um, and so that will be much easier because 2000 is such a clean number, right? Um, and so for 2000, um, let's first um, get the part that are not multiples of 5, right? This is 4 over 5 times 2000. So this is 1600, right? And so out of the, the 1600, the numbers that are not a multiple of 3, sorry, not a multiple of 3, and not a multiple of 4, um, these are 1600 times 2 over 3, that's not a multiple of 3, times 3 over 4, that's not a multiple of 4, right? And these cancel, these cancel to make 2, and so this is 16,000, sorry, 1600 times 1 over 2, this is 800, right? Uh, uh, uh. Um, so so what we want is 1600 minus these 800 right um, because these were not three and not four and what we want is um, multiples of three or four and so 1600 minus 800 this is 800 uh, so this is our our answer for 2000 and so since we, we need to add one um, we have eight zero eight hundred plus one this is 801 so the answer is 801 the answer is B Number 13, the parabola with, with equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and vertex h comma k is reflected about the line y equals k. This results in the parabola with, with equation y equals dx squared plus dx plus f, which of the following equals a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f. Okay, so um, first of all, let's call ax squared plus bx plus c. This should be fx, right? So, yeah, so let's call that fx. And then for dx squared plus ex plus f, Let's call this gx, right? Um, um, and so we can now notice that a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f, this is just the sum of the coefficients of everything, right? And so that is just equal to f1 plus g1, right? Because um, putting 1 in f will just give us the sum of the coefficients. And same thing for g, if we put 1 in g, sorry, sorry. If we put 1 in x, then that will just give us d plus e plus f, which are the sum of the coefficients, right? And so this is what we ultimately want. And now let's try to graph this, right? Um, but then since we don't know um, whether h or, or k is, they are like a, uh, whether they are like um, positive or, or negative, same for a or d or b or c or e or f, right? Um, and so let's just have fx here. This is fx, and then this point is h comma k. So, um, if if so, if we reflect about y equals k, then it will be like, then it will be like this touching, it's touching, right? So that will be gx, right? Um, and then um, now we have to get where one is, and so we need to draw a line x equals one, but we don't know where x equals one is because we don't know what f is. Sorry, 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 because we don't know what h is. Um, so so um, let's assume that. 
um, x equals 1 is here, and it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, um, and the only thing that we, we need to know is that this length and this length, they are equal, right? So let's say this is a, then this would also be a, right? Um, and so this point is f1, and this point is g1, right? So so the y values of these points are f1 and g1, and um, so if we add the y values of f1 and, and uh, yeah, so of, of those points, then we will have our answer. So f1, this is a plus k. So this is a plus k. Sorry, let's um, make that into k plus a, right? So we have k and then we have a more on the top. Um, and then g1, this will be we have k and then we went a down, right? So this is k minus a. We wanted f1 plus g1. And so if we add these two together, we get 2k. The answer is e. Number 14, given the 9-sided regular polygon, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, a6, a7, a8, a9, how many distinct equilateral triangles in the plane of the polygon have at least two vertices in the set this? Okay, so um, first let's draw this 9-sided regular polygon. And so we want to at least two vertices of these equilateral triangles to be uh, um, on the vertices of this uh, polygon, right? And so um, that means that if we choose two points from these nine, then we will get two triangles each, right? Because if we choose two points like this one and like this one, then we, then we will have two equilateral triangles, one to the inside and one to the outside. Um, and like if we choose one from here to here, right? Then we will get one to the inside and one to the outside, like that. Um, um, and so um, that means we have nine choose two and then times two, right? Because this is the number of choices and then we have two triangles for each choice. And so this is nine choose two times two um, and this is 72, right? Um, but then here we have an overlap, right? Because if we choose vertices this and this, right? Then we will have a triangle like this, but then this point will, will also be on the polygon, right? So that means choosing these two and um, choosing these two and choosing these two, they are all equal, right? So, so um, so we have three three um, possibilities, all giving the equal thing. And so to to get get rid of the overlaps, then we will have to subtract overlaps, and these would be two times. And then how many of this kinds kind kind of equilateral triangles are there? We have three in total, right? Because we have this one, and we can have this one, like that, and lastly we can have this one, like that, right? And so we have three of them. This is six, right? So we have so from 72, we have to subtract 6, so the answer is 72 minus 6, the answer is 66, so it's D. Problem number 15, an insect lives on the, on the surface of a regular tetrahedron with edges of length 1. It wishes to travel on the surface of the tetrahedron from the midpoint of one edge to the midpoint of the opposite edge. What is the length of the shortest such trip? Um, and two edges of a tetrahedron are, are opposite if they have no common endpoint. Okay, so let's try to draw a tetrahedron. Um, it would go something like that like that right and then we yeah so this would be our tetrahedron like that right um and then the insect that um it wants to go from this edge to this midpoint right um and so if we just kind of flatten this out then we will get something that looks like this right this will be how it looks like um and so this part is going to be um so that part's going to be this part and this side is going to be this side, right? And so if we plot our two points on here also, then that will be this point and this point. And so the um, shortest such trip, that would be this long, right? And um, this length would be equal to this length, and the edges have length one, so this has length one, so this has length one, therefore, this one also has length one, the answer is B. Problem number 16, a spider has one sock and, and one shoe for each of its eight legs. In how many different orders can the spider put on its socks and, socks and shoes, assuming that on each leg the sock must be, be put on before the shoe? Okay, so for this one, all we have to do is choose choose the possible sock-shoe pairs. Sock-shoe pairs, right? Uh, 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 because, because if we just choose the pairs, then the uh, um, um, order, they will be um, automatically arranged with the sock always coming before the shoe, right? And so if we just take two from 16, so... Um, so we have eight socks and eight shoes, so we have 16 um, articles of clothing, maybe. And so this is 16 choose two, um, and because we, we will choose the sock shoe pair for the first leg, and times and then we have 14 left, so we have 14 choose two for, for, from the second for the second leg, and then we have now 12 left over, so 12 choose two for the third leg, and then 10 choose two for the fourth leg, all the way to four choose two times 
2 choose 2, right? And so this is, this much is 16 times 15 divided by 2, plus 14 times 13 divided by 2. Sorry, this is not plus, this should be multiplied by. So this is times, times, and then 12 times 11 over, th over 2. And then times 10 times 9 over 2, all the way to times 2 times 1 over 2, right? And so this is, we have um, 8 of these. So we have 8 2, so that's 2 to the 8th power. And um, on, and on the um, numerator, that's just 1 times 2 times all the way to 16. So that's just 16 factorial. So this is equal to D, it's D. Number 17, a point P is selected at random from the interior of the pentagon with vertices A equals 0, 0,2, B equals 4, 4, 0, C equals 2 pi plus 1, 0, D equals 2 pi plus 1, 4, and E equals 0, 0,4. What is the probability that APB is obtuse? Okay, so let's first try a diagram, and it will look something like this, right? Um, yeah, um, so, so we have A, 0, 0,2, B, 4, 0, and all the way to E, 0, 4, and so our pentagon would be this thing right here, right? So this will be our pentagon. Um, and from that, we have to find a point P, where A, P, B, this is obtuse, right? And so, uh, uh, um, um, angle A, A, P, B would be right if and only if there was a, 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 a semicircle and um, the point P was on the semicircle, right? And so right there, this would be a right angle, right? But then for A, P, B to be an, an obtuse angle, angle then we need that point p to be inside um that semicircle so that it can be obtuse right so so that it can be greater than 90 degrees and so the the probability that apb is obtuse is the pro probability that point p falls within the semicircle um out of all the points possible on this pentagon right um, and so the area of the semicircle is first we have to find out the length of ab and so since this is 2 and since this is 4, then this whole thing is 2 root 5, right? And so half of it, that's just root 5. So this much, this is root 5. Um, and so, yeah, so we have um, 1 half, because it's a semicircle, times pi r squared, so pi and then root 5 squared. So this is, yes, yeah, so that is that over. And then we have the whole pentagon, which is just this um, rectangle minus this triangle so it's all over 4 times 2 pi plus 1 because this much is 2 pi plus 1 and this much is 4 and then minus this much is just area 4 right so all this equals the the um, denominator is 8 pi and the numerator is 5 over 2 pi so this is 5 over 16 so the answer is C Number 18, a circle centered at A with radius of 1 and a circle centered at B with radius of 4 are externally tangent. A third circle is tangent to the first two and to one of their common external tangents as shown. The radius of the third circle is... Okay, so um, first of all, we have like this urge to connect to all the centers, right? Obviously, we, we, we want the um, radius of the third circle, so we will just um, take them all down like this, right? And so um, let's say that the radius of the thir third circle is R. Right, so this would be r, and um, this is four, and this is r. So this much is four plus r, right? So that much is four plus r. And if we draw a line from r um, perpendicularly to right there, so this length would be um, so the whole thing is four, but this much is r. So if we subtract that, this is four minus r. So that's. 4 minus r, right? Uh, um, and next is, let's draw a line from the midpoint of r to, to the opposite side, right? So to this side. And so that means since this is r and this is 1, um, that, that, then that side will be r plus 1, right? And this much will be, the whole thing is r and the small thing, yeah, and the bottom is r. So the whole thing is 1 and the small thing is r, so this much would be r minus 1, right? So r minus 1. And um, lastly, if we look at um, the the triangle from b to a, right? So that would look like this, and so that that would be a right triangle like that. Um, this length is, sorry, um, this length is 5, right? This length is 4 minus 1 equals 3, and we don't know this length yet. Uh, but then since this is a 3 to 5, and then we have a right angle, then um, um, obviously this is length 4, and that's why this point is right on that point. Um, and so, since we know that the whole thing is 
sorry, since we, since we know that the whole thing is 4, 4 equals, and then this length we can get by Pythagoras, and this length we can get by Pythagoras, right? And so if we do that, the um, this length, that will be root r plus 1 squared minus r minus 1 squared, and then we have plus this much, which is root, sorry, that's not a plus, this is plus root 4 plus r squared minus 4 minus r squared, right? And so this equals... Um, root 4r, sorry, that's that's root 4r, plus root 16r, this equals 2 root r, plus 4 root r, this equals 6 root r, and this equals 4, right, because this was all the same as 4, so that means root r equals 2 over 3, um, and so r equals 4 over 9, that means it's d. Number 19, the polynomial px equals x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c, and it has the property that the mean of its zeros, the product of its zeros, and the sum of its coefficients, they are all, all equal. If the y-intercept of, of the graph of y equals p of x is 2, what is b? Okay, so so um, from here, um, we can know that the sum, sum of zeros, that is negative a, and, so, and also the product of the zeros, product of zeros, this is negative c, right? Um, so, um, so the mean of its zeros, so that will be negative a over 3 because um, there is 3 roots. And the product of its zeros, um, negative c, and the sum of its coefficients, a plus b plus c, they are all equal, right? But then since it said that the y-intercept is 2, and that means if x is 0, then p is 2. So if x is 0, these, these all go to 0, and that means c equals 2. So c equals 2, so this is negative 2. And since ne negative 2 is negative a over 3, so this means that um, a equals negative 6, sorry, a equals positive 6. Um, and since c equals 2 and a e equals 6, um, this is equal to a plus b plus c, which is 6 plus b plus 2. So b equals, sorry, this has to be a plus b plus c plus 1, right, because there's 1 in x cubed coefficient. So this, so this is 6 plus b plus 2 plus 1. So b equals negative 2 minus 9, so this is negative 11. So we have c equals 2, b is negative 11, and a equals 6. Um, we wanted b, so b equals negative 11. The answer is a. Number 20, points a, 3, 9, um, b, 1, 1, c, 5, 3, and d, a, a, and d, a, b lie in the first quadrant, and they are the vertices of quadrilateral a, b, c, d. Um, the quadrilateral formed by joining the midpoints of a, b, b, c, c, d, and d, a is a square. What is the sum of the coordinates of point d? Okay, so first let's bring in a grid, like that, um, and then, yeah, like that, and then now we will put some lines to make the coordinate plane. Um, let's try this part, yes, so that would be our y-axis, and this would be our x-axis, right, this would be our x-axis. Um, and so we have a3, comma nine. so a would be right over here, this would be a, um, and yeah, that's 3 over 9, and b will be 1, 1, this will be b, and c is 5, 3, so this is c, and d is a, b, so that's, um, we don't know, right? Um, and then they are the vertices of, of quadrilateral a, b, c, d, but the quadrilateral, yeah, but the quadrilateral formed by joining the midpoints of a, b, b, c, c, d, and d, a is a square. So let's try to join the midpoints of a, b, b, c, c, d, and d, a. The midpoint of a, b, that's, um, yeah, so that's this point. And the, the midpoint of BC, that's this point. Um, and C, D, and D, A, um, we don't know, but then since this, we, yeah, 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 but then since we have this much, then um, to, to make a, a square, we will need, we will need this, and this, and this, right? And so that will make a perfect square, right? So we would have points on here and here. Um, and so that means that um, this point and this point, they are midpoints of A, D, and cd right and so if we extend the lines no actually we don't even need to extend the lines because it's just clear where d is it's here so this is d right because if you see this this have the same distance and c and d they obviously have the same distance right and so d equals d equals this is seven comma three seven comma three right so the sum of the coordinates is seven plus three equals ten the answer is c Number 21, for positive, four positive integers a, b, c, and d have a product of 8 factorial and satisfy these three things. What is a minus d? Okay, so for these things, we just have to add 1 to them and they will become um, a plus 1, b plus 1, b plus 1, c plus 1, and c plus 1, d plus 1, right? So if we write them out, a plus 1 times b plus 1 
equals 525 because that's 524 plus 1. And the same thing, b plus c, sorry, b plus 1, c plus 1, this equals 147. And c plus 1, d plus 1, this equals 105, right? This equals 105. Um, and so if we divide 525, 147, and 105, um, then we get this is 20, yeah, then this is 25 times 21, 147 is 21 times 7, and 105 is 7 times 15, right? So that means this is a plus 1, and this is d plus 1. So a plus 1 is, is 25, d plus 1 is 15, and if we subtract, a minus d is equal to 25 minus 15, which is 10. So this is a minus d, the answer is d. Problem number 22. In rectangular A, B, C, D points F and G line of A, B so that A, F equals F, G equals G, B, and E is the midpoint of D, C. Also, A, C intersects E, F at H and E, G at J. The area, the area of the rectangle A, B, C, D is 70. Find the area of triangle E, H, J. Okay, so first, if we draw a diagram of this thing, then this will be it. And we want the area of E, H, J, right? So our area will be this one. Uh, um, and the, the area of the whole thing, this is 70. Okay, so first thing that we have to do is we have to draw a line from A, to e right um, so, um because then if we can get the um uh, um 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 yes so because then we know the area of aec right because then we know the area of aec then so if we can get the um um the the ratio of h to hj to jc then that would give us our answer right so let's say a h to hj to jc that's just a to b to c let's say that those are, are the length ratios right um, then, first of all, um, we know the area of a AEC, so that's um, one step. AEC, this is 1 over 4 of the whole thing, so 1 over 4 times 70. So this is um, this is 70 over 4, which is just 35 over 2. Right? So that's our area of AEC. Um, and, uh, um, and now we have A, B, and C to contend with. So we have A to B to C. Right, and then first of all, we can see um, right. Sorry, sorry. Um, first of all, we can see similar triangles. So, so using similar triangles, um, those two are similar, and so this ratio to this ratio is equal to this ratio to that ratio, right? Um, um but then since AF equals FG equals GB, so that means these three are the same, and DE equals EC, so these two are the same. That means the ratio of the length will be three to three to two to two, right? Um, so. So if we draw the triangle again, like this, right? So um, the ratio of this to this is 3 to 2. That means this ratio to this ratio, that's also 3 to 2. So A to B plus C, so A to B plus C, that's 2 to 3. So A to B plus C, that's 2 to 3, right? Um, and then next, we will look at these triangles, right? Because this to this ratio will be equal to A, B to C, right? So 4 to 3 equals a plus b to c so um, a plus b to c that will be 4 to 3 right and so now to to get the ratio of actual a to b to c right um then we have to multiply this by 7 because 4 plus 3 is 7 and we have to multiply this by 5 because 2 plus 3 equals 5 right so if we do that a is going to get 14 and then c is going to get 3 times 5 which is 15 right um and b is going to be 2 times 7 minus sorry sorry um two times seven times three minus fifteen so that's going to be six right so b over a plus c so b over a plus b plus c um this would be six over fourteen plus six plus fifteen which is uh thirty so sorry thirty five right so this is thirty five six over thirty five um and so that is this length over this length right and so if we do b over a plus b plus c this times AEC, AEC, um, that means that we will get this area, right? So um, this will be equal to 6, six over 35, 6 over 35 times 35 over 2. So this is 3. So the answer is 3, it's C. Number 23, a polynomial of degree 4 with leading coefficient 1 and, and integer coefficients has two real zeros, both of which are, are integers, which of the following can also be a zero of the polynomial. Okay, so since this this um, poly polynomial, this has um, 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 two real zeros, and that means two um, imaginary zeros, right? So we can write out, out this thing. Let's say um, it's x minus c, x minus d, because I want to conserve my a and my b. Uh, that times x squared plus mx plus n, right? Because 
C and D, those would be the real zeros, and from this would we we, we will get the two non-real zeros, right? Yeah, the two complex zeros. Um, um, and so let's say that those complex zeros, complex zeros, are um, a plus b i, right? Um, um, and if a plus b i is a zero, that means a minus b i is also a zero, right? And so these two would be the zeros of this thing, right? Um, and so n n would be equal to the multiple of these, so it's a squared plus b squared, um, and um, m, so, sorry, negative m, negative m would be equal to 2a, which is the sum of these two, right? Um, and so these two, so these two all have to be integer, right? Uh, um, um, but then since 2a a is an integer for all the choices, um, we don't really need, need to, to consider that, and so all we need is that a squared plus b squared is an in, is an integer, right? And so um, a is the real part, b is the a, a, a imaginary coefficient, right? And so if we just test out all of these things with a squared plus b squared, then we will get our answer. So um, first of all, with number a, that will be 1 half squared plus root 11 over 2 squared. So this is 1, oh, so this is 1 over 4 plus 11 over 4. This is 12 over 4, which is equal to 3. So um, 3 is an integer, so that it works, right? So the answer is A. Problem number 24. In triangle ABC, um, ABC equals 45 degrees. Point D is on BC, so that 2 times BD equals CD, and DAB equals 15 degrees. Find ACB. Okay, so first let's draw a diagram of this thing. So the triangle would look something like this, right? Um, so ABC is 45, and D is on BC, so that 2 times BD equals CD, so the length ratio is 1 to 2. And DAB equals fifteen degrees, right? And so, um, um, first of all, what what we want to so first of all, what we want to do is we want to um, um, draw a line from C to to um to like right angle A and D, right? And so that would give us that um, since these two combine to make sixty degrees, that means this is sixty degrees. And so, since this is a right angle, that means this is thirty degrees. Um, that means the ratio of the length of this to this. That would be 2 to 1, right? So that means this length is also 1, right? Um, and let's just call this middle point, this would be O. And um, since this length is 1 and, 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 that, and that length is, is also 1, right? Um, then if we draw a line from O up to B, right? Then, then this would be a, an, 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 an isosceles triangle, right? Um, um, and so that means this 60 degrees would be um, dispersed evenly among these two angles that means this is going to be 30 degrees and sorry that means that's going to be 30 degrees and this is going to be 30 degrees right but then the whole thing this was 45 degrees that means this one's going to be 15 degrees right um and since this is also 15 degrees that means um triangle a o b this is an, an isosceles triangle right so a o b is isosceles and if you see here b o c this is also 30 degrees and 30 degrees, so that's also isosceles. So that means AO, so yeah, yeah so, so um, the um, distance is um, AO and BO right here, and OC, they all have the same length, right? Uh, um, um, so, so, so since they all have the same length from one center point, that means um, A, B, and C can be on, on a circle, and the center of that circle would be O, right? So if we bring out that circle, um, that would look like this, and that would fit right like that, right? Um, and so in in and so in in the circle, right? O A and O C and O B they are radii, right? So 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 um, let's see what we want is A C B. We want this angle, right? But then we know that this angle is half of this angle because this O is, because this because O is the center, right? Um, and since this is fifteen degrees and this is fifteen degrees, then we know this angle and that is one fifty degrees, right? And since this angle ACB, the one that we want, is um is half of one one fifty degrees, that's seventy five degrees. So the answer is seventy five degrees. Um, th the answer is D. Number twenty five, last problem. Consider sequences of positive positive real numbers of the form x two thousand y all the way in, e in in which every term after the first is one less than the product of its two immediate neighbors. For how many different values of x does the term two thousand one appear somewhere in the sequence? Okay, so let's try to just write out these things first. So first we have x, and then we have two thousand, right? Um, um, and then it said that 
Every term after the first, there's one less than product of its two, two immediate neighbors. So 2,000 is one less than the product of its two immediate neighbors. So this is, let's say this is, um, yeah, so it said it's y. So xy minus 1, right? So that means 2,001, sorry, that means 2,001 equals xy. So y equals 2,001 over x, right? So y equals 2,001 over x. And if we check, we, we see that these, we said these two multiplied and then minus one, that gives us 2,000, right? Uh, um, um, and in the same way, we can get, get this value. Um, that will be 2,001 plus x over 2,000x, right? And uh, um, if we, we want to check um, the um, um, these two values multiplied, we'll give 2,001 over, plus x over x, and this is just one. So if we subtract one from this thing, then that will just give 2,001 over x, which is this value. So that is correct, right? And uh, uh, um, and in the same way, we get our next value, which is x plus one, sorry, um, black color, which is x plus one over 2,000. Uh, um, and, and in the same way, we, we get our next value, and that's just gonna be x for some reason. Um, and then our next value is gonna be 2,000, right? And then now we see what's happening, um, it's that these five values, they are just keep on repeating, right? Um, 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 and so um, it said, how many, uh, and so it said, for how many different values of x does the term 2001 appear somewhere somewhere in the sequence, right? And the maximum it's going to be is five, right? Because we have five, five terms um, in the whole sequence, right? Um, but then, so this value has to be 2001, but then we have five and then we have to subtract one because this value can never be 2002 um, um, because this value can never be 2001 right if 2001 equals 2000 then that's like math is broken right um, and so this is 5 minus 1 equals four choices so four values four values of x right because this can be 2001 or this can be 2001 or this can be 2001 or this can be 2001 so that's four values the answer is d so that was it for um, AMC 12 of 2001 and thank you for watching.